I will explain what I want to get on today. Uh, it's, a, it's a quick one. Amen. Okay, not a quick one. It's a very long one. But, so I won't use today to finish it up. In fact, I'm going to be teaching this in, in a continuous stretch till almost the end of this month, Anne, because uh, it's very important. So I'll be taking it through. Let's just, let's just pray. Father, we pray that you give us knowledge and understanding into your word this morning to the very glory of your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And everyone say amen. amen. So I'm actually going to deal with uh, words of knowledge. It's what word of knowledge. Uh, word of knowledge, and it's uh, part of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I have a certain set of scriptures I will read out, then I will just talk to us in terms of breaking this thing down to the little bit. And like I said to us, amen, like I said to us, we will, we will not take all of this in this service because it is literally impossible. I'll be talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, I'll be talking about how to uh, build and discover that gift of the Holy Ghost inside of you and those of you who have received the gift in how to mature the gift so that it will be at work in your life then I will merge that with also uh, regular knowledge which are the basis for such knowledge to be on uh, there's there are a lot of things about knowledge that I will share I will talk about so it's very obvious that I cannot do that all in a single sitting neither in two sittings or in three sittings. And this teaching isn't just the kind that you listen to the preacher say amen and go away. It's the kind that you will want to spiritually engage yourself in, in terms of practice. Because word of knowledge in terms of the gifting of the Holy Spirit is essential in a believer's life. And I don't think Christians should be part of the people who come to church without the necessary ingredients of uh, the Christian practice inside of you. So the word of knowledge is what we'll be looking at today and I would read a, a few scriptures. Now, my scriptures here are in no particular order. So as I talk to you and as you know, I'm inclined, I will read a text to you. I'm sure every one of us uh, are with me. So I would want to start off uh, by reading something from the book of Daniel, right? Uh, Daniel chapter one, verse four. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Okay, I will read Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. That should be where we start. Let's just read from that first of all. Okay, right. Let's read that first. Daniel chapter 1 verse number 4. Uh, Children in whom there, there was no blemish, well-favored, skillful in wisdom, and what? Cunning in, in knowledge. Cunning in knowledge. You will find evidences of the word of knowledge in the Old Testament. Uh, scriptures within the operations of the old covenant and in the new covenant and I'm going to explain to you what that is and they were cunning in knowledge understanding signs that such as has ability in them to stand in king's palaces right and whom they might teach the tongues the learning and tongues of the Chaldeans I just wanted to uh, if you have your Bible some of the scriptures you might underline a few things like I encourage some of you to start coming to church with your book Bible, in terms of Bible, the book, not just Bible, the app, right? I want you to start coming to church with Bible, the what? Bible, the book, and not just Bible, the app. So when I ask you to take a note by the rim of your Bible, or I ask you to underline something, right? You'll be able to do that effectively. Amen. So, the key text I want to read here, Daniel's. I'm going to read Daniel's. The book of Daniel, I'll be, I'll be filtering down my references here for the sake that I want to try as much as possible to not read all. If I read all of this, you won't go home today, right? <laughs> I have a large study on this subject matter, it's pretty large. Right, I will slim it down for you. Daniel 5 verse 12. Let me read that one. Daniel 5 verse 12. For as much as what? For as much as an excellent spirit. Daniel 5 12. For as much as what? An excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and shewing of hard sentences and and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, 
and he will show the interpretation. Now, these are some of the qualities that I want you as believers to, to possess. Now, if you can do this, amazing. Watch this. Amen. I've got plenty of the kids preaching with me this morning. Uh, amen. amen. It's their time. Uh, an excellent spirit. Do you know you need that? Say, I need it. Knowledge. Say, I need it. You need it. Understanding. Say, I need it. Interpreting of dreams. Now, I'm, sh I'm sure we've talked a lot about interpreting dreams, right? We have really, really broken that. And I'm so glad some of you now understand your dreams. Not those things they used to tell you that you, you just wake up. I've eaten flesh and blood. I have been initiated in the dream. All those kind of lousy things they tell you. And you, amen. And you miss the real meaning. Huh? Of what your dream is about. We have corrected a whole lot of that. Now some of you can really help to understand your dreams. Can you trim my sound down a bit? I'm, I'm getting some whistling, please. Amen. Now some of you can really understand your dreams better than you used to understand before. Isn't that so? Now if you haven't gone through that school, in here. Maybe we're going to have to revisit that for the benefit of those of you who are either new, right? So that you don't sleep, wake up, get a dream, and just go start looking for deliverance. Really, I have not understood how that works, how you get a dream, get up, and look for deliverance. Amen. But I explained that already. I might go back to that. But interpreting dreams, you all need it. Amen. Showing of hard sentences. How do you dissolve hard sentences? How do you explain difficult things? Like when you read things in the scripture and they are very tough. How do you explain them? How do you understand revelations and mysteries? How do you get them? How do you know what they mean? I mean, how do you know? Talk about word of knowledge. So let me use the right word. How do you know? Amen. So you need it. So I need it. Dissolving of doubts. I mean, if you have ever been in those situations, maybe online, your friends post certain things that sound like it is spiritual out of their carnal understanding, thinking they are combating with scriptures, and they get you confused. If you, if you don't have the gifting to dissolve doubts, doubts will confuse you. Because the way people could mangle things up, you will become even confused because of the way these things are thrown, very complex. So dissolving of doubts, it's not very good quality. It says these things we have found in Daniel. So the average Christian today, these things that were found in Daniel, can we say that they are found in the average Christian today? Can we say these things that were found in Daniel can be found in today's believers? Are you sure that every believer has this capacity and ability? You sure? Even you sitting down in this place right now, do you have all of this? Because I'm going to give you one hard sentence here now so that you can crack it. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to make you not be confident in yourself, but we need to desire much more than we are. There's a lot. If Daniel, under the old covenant, can be operating with all of these giftings, and you, a New Testament believer, after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, are not operating in this gifting, there's a challenge. Amen. Amen. There's what? There's a challenge. If Daniel could have it in his time, I can have it in my time. And even more, because the Holy Ghost is with me. Praise God. Now, what's this word of knowledge about? I, uh, knowledge have different dimensions. There is, I, I put out here, first of all, the body. There's a part of knowledge that is contained within the body where your brain is functional in. Your brain is a part of that. It's contained in your brain. That's the things, the data stored in your memory, in your brain. Now, knowledge itself is not the utilization of information. Knowledge itself is data. Knowledge itself is information. Do you get that? What you know. What you do with what you know is where wisdom comes into play. How you interpret what you know is where understanding comes into play. Now, knowledge is the data. The interpretation of the data itself is understanding. The utilization of the data is wisdom. I thought that's supposed to be easier, but it's feeling like it's even more complex. Oh, man. I was telling myself this is the easiest way to say, to say this. Amen. The piece of data, let's say, let's say, uh, let me take an example. I don't know. Who can help me with one word? Uh, 
I'm thinking of gone, but I don't want to use gone. It's so rough. I don't know why the word gone is coming into my head, but not gone. Okay, car. Right? Car. How many of you know what a car is? How many of you know what a car is? So if you see a car, you can identify a car, right? Is that not so? Good. So you know a car. Information. Data. That's knowledge. Right? Good. But that is a car. It's not enough. What is a car used for? Understanding. There are different kinds of cars. Can a small car be used for what a truck is used for? It takes understanding to make the difference. So do you understand this knowledge? Understandest what thou readest? Can you interpret it? Does it make sense to you when broken down? Now, if you know what a car does, what can you do with a car? That's wisdom. I don't know if that helps. Right, let's go with word word of knowledge. <laughs> we will explain these stuff as we go. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. There are, con there are complex explanations within this context, but if you really grasp what I'm saying, this is fun, knowledge, right? Understanding, what does it do? It blows breeze, good. But you can understand it blows breeze and not use it and be sweating. So you know, oh, this is fun. There's breeze coming out of it, so I can keep it next to me, and then it can help me when the place is hot. I've utilized it, I've wise. Now, if I know this is a fan, and I know it blows breeze, but I sit behind the fan sweating, I'm what? I don't have, I don't have wisdom. Meaning I'm what? I'm foolish. I don't know what that is. I sure I, I've tried. Amen. I've tried. But if you still don't get it, if you still don't get it, maybe I'll still I'll still try to help you to understand that. Now, this is sense data. Why I use the term sense data is because the knowledge contained within your body are stored in your brain and your memory. They are received from your natural senses. Either your eye saw it. Right, whether it's a book or whatever, your eyes saw it, or your ears heard about it, or your skin felt it. So they are usually sensual knowledge. James spoke about sensual knowledge, sensual wisdom, wisdom of this world from the senses. Now, there are sensual knowledge that are picked up by your natural senses. It's there in everybody and it's normal. Everybody should be able to. If you don't, people ask you, you don't get sense. When they say you don't have sense, it means that you can't sense. Amen. Amen. Mean that you can sense and you can put sense to good use. Common sense is the general ability of people to pick similar data. If there is a fire in this place now, you expect everybody to know it's a fire. Common expectation is common sense. Right? Yes. But if there is a 220 volts electricity here in that wire, that's not common sense. Because the little child won't know what 220 volts of electricity is. It's not common sense. Right? Yes. Good. If something falls very heavily on the ground, bah! An adult will be scared because of the sound. You will just be shocked, right? Good. What happens to the little child? The little child also will be shocked and start crying. Common sense, common reaction, generic. That's how it is. Even the animal that is around here will run when, that's, when that object falls, even when his life is not in danger. Common reflex, common sense. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if that one helped anyway. It's not, it's not part of my sermon. Just by myself telling you all this. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. Well, I told you that I, I'm not going to, I, I'll be taking these teachings in flow. Whenever my time stops for this part, I'll stop. Then I'll continue on Wednesday. Then I'll continue on Saturday in the camp. Then on Sunday. So anyone you miss, you've missed. You don't know when the main climax might be. <laughs> Amen. You don't know where the major climax might be. Now, the mind is processed. That's where you have understanding and wisdom playing their game in that you have, you read a book, it, you pick information from the book, it goes into your brain, it stays there. It could literally remain dormant and useless to you. There are so many things you read in school you haven't used today. Do you understand? Yes. But you still have the knowledge. If I ask some of you certain of your mass questions, you will still say, yes, I know how to solve that mass, but you haven't used it. With your senses, you picked it when the teacher was teaching it. 
but it has not been useful to you, right? You understood it. So it stayed beyond, from the body you picked it, it stayed somewhere around the mental region, but has not been processed. Some have been processed in partial form. Do you get that? The, the mind does the, the work of processing data. That's why the mind is the creative center. The mind can take what it, has, what it knows here and join with, with what it knows there and create something else that somebody else will know. Like your TV set. Somebody picks different components and puts it together and you know television. But before the person knew, before you knew television, somebody knew IC, somebody knew capacitor, somebody knew resistor, right? Yes. And then put them together for something new for you to know. That's why knowledge is never ending. Because every single time, knowledge itself creates new data that increases what people have to know. So there is an infinite scope of knowledge. Knowledge is always born out of knowledge. Now, your mind does the processing. It's the processing point of data. Now, the mind does not just receive data from the body. The mind receives data from the spirit also. The spirit is, while the body is a source of sense data, the spirit is a source of inspired data. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty does what? There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them what? Giveth them, yeah. Why it doesn't just give them dry knowledge is because it's, it's an inspiration. So it's basic six point is the processing point of understanding. Understanding, of course, you know, there must be knowledge and data. So because this data is flowing this way, you didn't say that the inspiration just barely gives them knowledge. But then there is an intersecting point between knowledge and understanding, just about, say, this region, like that, like so. Uh, those of you who are watching from the screen, from where you are, probably don't know what part of the screen I'm pointing at. I don't know, that, like that region, like, oh, okay. I'm noticing something amazing. We are projecting only on this screen, right? So those of you who are probably watching from the other screens won't have any idea what we are talking about. But use your feet. Amen. Use your feet and believe that you're seeing what we are seeing. Amen. Right, I set this up for just this screen, and I'm just realizing that those guys will. But as a matter of fact, that's how it will be for just this screen for good reasons, except you want to bring extra laptops to handle your screen separately. There's no crime in that. Is it bad? It's not bad. You bring more laptops, you handle your screen separately. But uh, later watch the video, amen. I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> so when God speaks data, information, and releases it to you, it's bundled data. That information God drops into your spirit is the word of knowledge. I, 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 let, me, let, me, let me put this out. Uh, first, Cor first Corinthians chapter 12. Let's read verse 1 to 11. Can we read First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11? Flip your Bibles there. You see, that's why I like book Bible. Amen. I like book Bible, you know? Yeah, I like book Bible. You could use your e electronic Bible to study, make searches, and all that. But in church... I love you to have your book Bible. It's, it's interesting. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Are you there? Are you there in 1 Corinthians 12? Okay, good. Let's get started with, from this one. Now, you should be having a note and a pen in your hand to take down notes on this one because you really can't make any sense out of this talk this morning if you're not watching this. I've got a few minutes left. Amen. Is my time expanding or is normal? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm seeing my time here. Okay. Let's see how it goes. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now we should not run an ignorant church. Amen. I know after we're done, we're going to praise God again and dance and celebrate. But that's not all. When we praise God, we dance, we celebrate. We should not also be ignorant of spiritual things. Amen. I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cost, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Now there, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Right? And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God 
which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit, to have advantage, to increase your possibilities. That's what it means. For to one is given the spirit of the word of what? Wisdom. Of wisdom. So I will explain words of wisdom later. To another, the word of knowledge. Of knowledge by the same what? Spirit. By the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of what? Healing. Healing by the same spirit. We will cover all of this, right? I will cover all of these as we go. I will cover all nine of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, what? Prophecy. Now, almost every music minister is supposed to have this gift. Now, if you don't, it's a big trouble. You're singing lyrics. I, don't say, I didn't say music entertainers, I said music ministers, there's a difference. The church has entertainers and has ministers. Do you understand? Yeah. There are those who sing to entertain. They sing to you, right? There are those who sing to minister. They are all in church. I'm not condemning either, any side. I'm just letting you know that there's a difference. Do you understand that? There's a difference. To another, diverse kind of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. That's the interesting part. We have interpretation of dreams, and there are interpretation of tongues. That's where it's going to get interesting when we get there. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Watch this. The same spirit, the Holy Ghost, is releasing this gift. But this is the interesting part. Some of you come to church and you really don't have this passion for the gift of the Holy Ghost to be at work in your life. But there's a, there's a trouble there. How many persons in the context of that scripture that the Bible say the gift is divided to? Look at that scripture again, the last text that we read. How many persons? I didn't get you. Are you scared? Amen. I know if I'm saying, take it, take it, take it, amen, your voice will be loud. I, I, I trust. But let's just flow with me here. How many persons are entitled to this gift? The pastor? The preacher? How many persons? So I want you to point one person in church you think has a right to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Point one person in church, let me see, that you believe should be having the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, you didn't know what I say. I say point somebody in church that you think and you know should have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Point to somebody. I know, I, I know you will have, but I say point to someone else you think should have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some, of you, some of you don't trust your neighbors. You, you are, maybe you, you are not sure this one. Maybe you thought this one should be having the slaps of the Holy Spirit or the beatings of the Holy Spirit. Uh, just point to somebody you think should have the gift of the Holy Spirit in church. So that the person can feel some level of concern. When he says, you should be having the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, now I know. Point to somebody, uh, you know. You sure? Amen. So you understand the person who is sitting with you in church He's supposed to have what? Every. Is it not every? Yes. Let me read something else. Sorry. Let me. <laughs> see, I'm going to have it. <laughs> if you, you see, if you don't have the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be running empty. You're going to be running what? You'll be running what? Empty. empty. How do you get to know the things you are supposed to know if you are operating in the absence of the Holy Spirit? How do you get to know? Do you know that the first, the first trouble we had started with knowledge, religion, in relation to knowledge? I don't know if you remember that tree. <laughs> Have you read it before? That tree? That tree? What was it called? I know some of you say apple. If it's apple, you just like apple. I'm sure because of the book of my book of Bible story or those stuff that drew that red stuff that she held in her hand. Like, 
I need, you, I need you to understand that a lot of the things you read in the book of Genesis, please get, you do read them with a level of spiritual understanding. That you see fruit, right, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, might not necessarily be fruit like the way you see in your market. There is this tree growing, and what's actually projecting from the tree is not vitamin, it's not a vitamin related substance. It's intelligence related substance coming out from a tree. So you, it should make you know that tree doesn't even look like regular trees. It's called the tree of what? Ah, good of evil? No. Don't crucify him. He's telling you what he knows. Amen. Genesis 2. He's telling you what he knows. Amen. Amen. Genesis 2, read verse 9. Once it's out there, feel free to read it. Amen. Yes. Out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow the trees that are planted. Okay, don't worry. Everybody read it. Don't worry. Sit down. Everybody read, read, read. Everybody read, read. Genesis 2 9. Out of the ground, made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge. So, you see, if knowledge isn't powerful, what actually, what tree? Power the fall of man. Knowledge. Nothing else was even put there. The first major challenge, knowledge. So what we know makes us. What we know defines us. Your destiny, future, all you're talking about are built around knowledge. Knowledge was the first thing put there. See that. Verse 17. But that of the tree... Of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Yeah. Knowledge can give life, knowledge can kill. Now, if knowledge is this powerful, what do you think is the fate of an average Christian that does not have the gift of word of knowledge? Now, I want a situation where when you go back from church, you go leave your TV sets, leave all your pleasures, leave those stuff, and kneel down and pray very heavily and say, God, I need this gift. What do you think of a Christian that doesn't have the gift of, of knowledge? I, I want, let me read, a, let me read a, few, a few texts for you. Some of them I, I didn't plan to read. Maybe, okay, I'll read one. Amen. Let me read one text. Uh, it's, uh, there's a lot I would have read. Okay. Habakkuk 2, verse 14. I'll read that, just that. I'm slimming this down because I know I would still teach this as I go, so I will show you more text. Habakkuk 2, Habakkuk 2, 14. Habakkuk 2, 14. Are you there? Habakkuk 2, 14. All right. Everybody read it? You still looking for Habakkuk? It's in the Old Testament. Just very close to Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, right? So when you flip back, it's among the minor prophets, so just search down, down. Those of you with phone will be so quick, like, I found it. That's why I want you with the book Bible, so I know that you really know where the book is. Yeah? So if somebody is still looking for Habakkuk near you in the Bible, please help someone. I see some persons are still trying to figure out the Habakkuk. So uh, quickly help them find that book. Find that book before they lose it. Find that book before it's lost from their Bible. Amen. Praise God. So, I know, all of you have been reading all the New Testament scriptures, and as soon as I said Habakkuk, I noticed so many persons didn't open their Bibles. So that's why I want you to wait. I want to wait patiently for you to open Habakkuk. <laughs> Amen. Have you found Habakkuk? All right. Read chapter 2 and verse number 14. So this is what is called the knowledge of the glory of God. Knowledge of God's glory. Knowledge of God's person. Knowledge of God's manifestation. Now, knowledge. What shall the earth be filled with? Knowledge. 
Every one of you sitting here in church is entitled to operating in the gift of, of the word of knowledge. Now, if you don't have it, there's a lot of things you will not know. Now, uh, have you seen those people who usually go to churches because they want people to see visions for them? Right? Yeah. Now, honestly, let me ask us in a, very phys in a, in a physical way. If you can see, would you need somebody's eyeball to see? What is the proof? When you need somebody to guide you, it's a proof of what? It's a proof of what? Vision is about sight. If you need somebody to guide you to see, that is somebody's eyeballs to help you find direction, it is an indication that you are blind. So going anywhere for someone to see vision for you is that you have pronounced yourself blind. Because if your eyes are working, you will not find or look for somebody to be seeing a vision that you can see for yourself. Are you, are you, getting, are, are you getting what I'm trying to explain? Yes, now, word of knowledge is one way. You see, the Holy Spirit is always present in the supernatural. And even as you're sitting here in church, the beauty of it all is that the Holy Ghost can deposit data, information inside you and make you know something you don't know. Now, what is... How do you differentiate between the things you know and what is likely word of knowledge? Word of knowledge is usually an information that you don't have or an information that you don't have in a specific kind of way. I don't know what I'm explaining there. I'm not reading it from this place. I'm actually just telling you from my heart. What I have here are just Bible references, which I'm reading to you. You could look at it. They're all Bible references exclusively. There are no notes. Apart from this little thing I wrote with my pen. So I might give you one definition now and give you a very different way the next minute. So you better write it down because my grammars can change. I can use many vocabularies to explain the same thing. So when I give you a definition, grab it, write it down. I have passed, I have passed. You understand? When you're in a bus, you see one signboard, you're trying to read it and the driver is going. If you don't read it very far, what happened? The bus drives, you just try. In your mind, you say, when we, when we come back this road again, I will read that. <laughs> That's what's happening here now. <laughs> Amen. So, that information that you receive, right, that is not from you, it's not from your senses, it's not from you processing what you have received, and it's just supernaturally dropped into you. That's an indication of a word of knowledge. Now, I'm not saying anything that drops into your spirit is word of knowledge, but that's an indication of how you can know word of knowledge. Now, I want to explain, I want to read 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 14. Uh, you can put that on the screen also. 10 to 14, 1 Corinthians 2. Let's do this quickly. Amen. May the Lord begin to release the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon every one of you. Amen. And may the gifts of the Holy Ghost come to work in your life. Amen. The Bible says the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to everyone to profit with all. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 10. The gift of the Holy Spirit is given to everyone to do what? To profit. There is an advantage there is an advantage. So you see these people roaming around looking for prophets. Roaming around looking for people that will see vision. And they say, this guy is a prophet. That guy is a that. Guy is a that. For operations, I say, put the scriptures on the screen, please. Uh, you, you, will be able, you will be able to speed up this process if you put your scriptures out a bit faster than you're doing. I say, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 14. Have you opened it? You've opened it. I know it's New Testament, so it's going to be very sweet. Amen. All right, let's, let's read this. But God has what? Watch that. The things that God knows, you don't know them. The things that God has in his heart and his mind, you don't know them. Now, God is the composite of infinite knowledge. It's the, it's the custodian of infinite what? He has knowledge of yesterday. He has knowledge of today. He has knowledge of tomorrow. He has knowledge of the next incident and knowledge of the next what? Event. You have limited knowledge because your knowledge is based on what has happened, experience, what your senses can pick up, right? Good. But then if you stand here, for example, how would you know that something might fall from this place and hit you? How would you pick up that signal to almost move out of that place before the incident happens? How would you grab such an information? You don't have it because you don't have any understanding of what events can happen next, right? So, but what happened is between the dimension of God and our dimension, the in-between is the 
is the regions of the Holy Spirit. The apple of the Holy Spirit is a connection between the God person and the man person. And the link between the God person and the man person is the Holy Spirit. This is the connection. Do you understand that? Yes. Now what he does is that through that channel link, he drops certain fragments in bits. Word of knowledge are not a lump of very detailed info. Sometimes they are very small, scanty thing that you need to still process in terms of interpretation, in terms of understanding. Mind you, there is no gift of the Holy Spirit called the word of understanding. Understanding is your processing of the word of knowledge itself to produce wisdom. Or wisdom can come to you to give you direction on how to process knowledge. But there is no gift of word of understanding. So by the time you do receive an information from God, maybe for example, there is something you needed to know, like a business idea or something you needed to do, right? And you have no idea. Sometimes what drops into your spirit man could be one word. One word. One word just drops in. That's the spark. That's what gives you the spark. The idea, it lands. Some of you who are not spiritually sensitive will just push it aside, right? And, and get going, not knowing what it implies. Sometimes you might say something, and what you said is not from what you used to know. It's just what is put in your mouth like an instant data. You just say it. Like the song you wrote last week. That was not born out of what you knew, but what was inspired. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. It says, God reveals these things to us by what? By his what? For his spirit. For no man does what? God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For no man knoweth the things of a man. Right? The spirit of man talks about the man's own spirit with the man's mind, the man's processing components, the engine room of the man. No man understands anything about that man. For example, your, everything contained within your spirit, your brain, and everything is you. I don't know what you know. That's why when I preach, I will ask you, are you getting me? Do you understand? So even when you don't understand, you can tell me I understand and I will believe you because I don't know what you know. Amen. Do you understand? And I believe you. Amen. Even when I don't know what you know. Now, no man knows it, for what man knoweth the things of a man, except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but what? But the spirit of God. So the things that God knows, the infinite custodian of knowledge, we don't know except the Holy Ghost. He said, now we have received, verse 12, we have received not the spirit of the world. Why did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? That was not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of what? The spirit which is of God. Not that we might what? That we might know. Do you understand that? That we might what? Know the things that are freely given to us by. So, as you're in here now, for example, if somebody is about to. There's a way something. Somebody. You, you keep something as a sport. And as you're walking out, you just know somebody will steal it. Do you understand? Yes, now, you, you could probably go back, pick it up, and keep it very safe. Or you could say, nobody will touch it. Only for you to come back and it has been stolen, and you say, this thing been entered my mind. I don't know if you've been there before. <laughs> so knowledge has been given to you, but you didn't process it properly. And you didn't apply wisdom. And that's why it was not effective. That we may know the things that are freely given. So God just, as we're all in church now, for example, the next thing that will bring blessings into your life can be deposited in your spirit. So many persons will walk out and take that knowledge and go and use it. Some people will walk out and they'll just dump that knowledge. And insights can be dropped into somebody right here now. And you will treat it all differently. That we may know what? The things that are what? Freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, for they are what? Foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, 
because they are spiritually designed. This body and the brain and the natural man cannot receive anything directly from the spirit. Neither can this region understand it because they are only meant to be spiritually designed. Are you understand what I'm saying? So wake your spirit up. Wake your spirit up. Don't be that kind of Christian that only comes to church, open your Bible, close, and you go. And the Holy Ghost will be talking to you and you're not paying attention. Knowledge is being dropped on you and you're not listening. Sometime, you could even have gotten a very good job if you had listened when the knowledge was dropped to move somewhere. You probably missed it somewhere. Do you know that? You missed it somewhere. There is always a divine direction for God's people. Always a divine. So your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk that way in it. Even when I'm teaching like this, as I'm teaching, when you sit in a sermon, you know what, ha what happens to me in a sermon? Anytime I sit in a sermon, I am waiting for a deposit of knowledge. Not just the things that are said by the preacher. He said, these things we speak. Let me just read it again. Let me read that part again. Which things, verse 13, which things we want? We speak. We speak not in words that which man's wisdom what? But which the Holy Ghost, comparing spiritual things with what? That's verse number 13. Amen. Amen. When I listen to a preacher, I'm saying, Holy Ghost, d deposit knowledge inside of me. So that when I move, you see, when he deposits knowledge inside of you, you will not instantly know everything. But you have the lump, you have that seed of knowledge inside. That seed of knowledge dropped inside of you. Now you go to your business and you look at the project you've been working on for the past couple of weeks that you've not been able to get any breakthrough in. All of a sudden, you start occurring to you like you know what to do. I don't know, some of you don't have that feeling. Like, you, you were not able to, you have tried what you could do before and nothing worked. But unusually, you are now on the project and you're having this sensation that there is this, let me do this, this one thing. And by the time you do that one thing, it works. How did you do it? I don't know. Yes, you don't know means that your body does not contain the information. That's why certain times you do certain things and when you ask, how did you do it? Your answer is what? I don't know. Meaning that the source of knowledge with which you carried out that action did not come from your senses. But you were able to respond to the knowledge. You can't explain how you knew, but you know. Amen. Amen. You know, Raymond came into the house. He came into the house. And was, I was telling him, I have not seen you. You were here for two days, and I haven't even set my eyes on you. You know, and all the yada, yada, yada at all. And he was saying, oh, I was around. I came, and you were lying down. And I said, it's OK. I said, and then I, just, then I just said, thank God you are alive. Now, I didn't plan to say that, but I just like, thank God you're alive. Then him now said, ah, it's well, oh, their plan did not work, or oh, they did not do the rest. Me, we said, thank God you're alive. I didn't have the detail of what I was thanking God for. But I had the knowledge to thank God that he was alive. I said, thank God you're alive. Before he began to explain how whether robbers chased somebody into the car that he was in. And the robbers came in there and attacked everybody in the car. Stabbed the woman, took her money. You know. He only got some bruises in his leg. That's why he's not on cover shoes now. He's not on tie. But I didn't know there was an incident like that. And he didn't say it, right? But I had the knowledge to thank God for his life. That was last night. That was last night. You see, everything won't come to you in black and white. But there is always a deposit of spiritual knowledge that makes you just know something. Amen. Amen. Let me read one more scripture and I will leave the rest for Wednesday. I want to read the one that has to do with preachers. Uh, I think I would take that one from Ecclesiastes. 12 verse 9. Now, I was saying to you that when you sit in church like this listening to a sermon, 
if you want to build spiritual gifts, at this point in time, there is knowledge deposited inside somebody. Now, that's why it's called the word of knowledge. It's just like, boom. Now, please understand that word is not grammar. And word is not vocabulary. Do you know that? Word is not grammar. Word is not necessarily even a sound. God can put the word, a word inside you now. But it might not be an English word. You know what? I have to explain this. Because some of you, when you say God speak to me, you start waiting for English language. Like, that's the only thing God can say. There are many ways of communication, including even signs. Do you know that? Including even what? Signs. When you, when you reduce yourself to only English as how you can have communication, that's, that's the trouble. That's the trouble. You know, you could, you could stare at this fan and smile, and something has been said to you from this fan that is not English language. The burning bush was not English language. Neither was it Hebrew or Greek. I don't know whether you guys are picking me at all. You know, I, you know, I used to avoid this type of teaching. And I'm just starting. And you guys are looking at me like this. What happens when we start going deeper than this? Are we okay or should we go back to the basic? Do we, should we go back to reciting John 3.16? Are we okay? Are we safe to keep going on this one? You're the one who said it. <laughs> So that by the next time we go deeper, that we keep going deeper. Because some of you, I want, to, I want to help to awaken that spirit man inside of you that you have not been given a chance to live. That you've not been given a chance to live. Do you know there are certain persons that will bring quarrel and fight around you? You know you can beat them. But all of a sudden you have this knowledge. Something telling you, something is inside that just resists any part of your body from throwing a punch. If you don't listen and you hit that guy, either you kill somebody or they will go and put you in a case that you spend the rest of your life paying bail and going to court and coming back. As I'm talking to you now, just learn, just hear me. God is speaking to us every time. My trouble is, why is it that too many Christians can't even hear God? My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. But before we are through with this teaching this month and the rest, I pray and I believe most of you will begin to walk in the dimension of the Holy Ghost in your life. Amen. I'll read the scripture because I know we're getting to the end of this meeting. Now let me just quickly read this. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 9. It says, Moreover, because the preacher was wise, so as I'm talking to you when the preacher is talking, uh, the man of God is talking, the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Amen. So, while I'm talking to you now, right? While I'm talking to you now, in the process of this teaching, in the process of these words, each person hearing from me will be receiving certain dimension of the deposit of knowledge. Maybe you can't live here without a change in your knowledge level. Yeah. Now, what you do with it is different, but it's there. Okay. Let me grab this. See, you, your phone. Let me have a phone. This is a phone. This phone has an internal memory and has a memory card, right? Has internal memory. Inside, the contents inside those memory, those storage spaces, are what we refer to as data. When you go to a Google Play Store and you download an app and you install it into this phone, all you have included in this phone is data. It's all files. If you install a program in your computer, when you go to the folder where you install the software, what do you see? Collections of files. They are all data, some kind of collections of files. Right? That program you install might not be able to do anything on its own. Unless until you go back to the program, run the program, open it, and utilize the what? The functions and information, whatever is displayed in that program. 
So the program might have like a camera, right? Would you feel like having a photograph taken and your phone would just go up on its own, turn on the camera app, set it in front of you, and snap, pop? Will it do that? But does it have the ability to take your picture? That's the data. It's stored in there. When you listen to a preaching like this, every single time you do that, some data, some software, some app, some information called knowledge is always installed inside of you, right there in your mind, to be processed, to be used. It is when you live here now into your business, your relationship, your life, and all that, that you are expected to run the app and then put the app to work. So it does for you what it should do. Now, if you don't use it, it's still going to be there, but it's dormant. It's a resident, but not active. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The preacher does what? Was wise. He taught the people what? Knowledge. Means that knowledge was transferred to the people. I will give you pastors after my heart that will do what? That will feed you with what? That will feed you with knowledge. These foundations, how you treat the knowledge you receive as you hear the preacher, will train you on how you will manage the word of knowledge when it is given to you by inspiration. Anybody who leaves church and cannot process properly what knowledge you acquire when you heard the preacher, when you heard, when you hear the spirit, you will have to, you will respond to it with the same level of laxity. And that's where it costs you. Because some people might have this app, there's a camera, and I'll be going to somebody, please take, take my picture for me. Please take my picture. But you have a phone in your hand. I don't know, it's my phone, but take my picture. I, I want to take a passport. What is, that, what is that called? That's called what? Ignorance. What is ignorance? Ignorance is the absence of knowledge. Knowledge is the opposite of light. I mean, sorry, knowledge is the opposite of darkness. Knowledge is light. The absence of knowledge is darkness. <laughs> the absence of what? Knowledge. Is darkness. Ignorance is darkness. It's in the Bible. My people are destroyed for what? So you have it, but you will be, that's why, prophet, prophet, see vision for me. I don't know what is disturbing my life. The answer is already with you, but you're not running the app. So the man is going to turn on his own app, which was meant for him. Maybe your own revelation is not with him. He will share his own with you. If he was to be the one to have an accident, he will share it with you and pass the accident to you. And I will tell you something about Revelation. Seven times, I tell, I've told you about dreams before, that the power of a dream is in the interpretation. I think I've told you that before. If the interpreter tells you that you're going to have famine, you have famine. So be careful who is interpreting your dream for you. The guy will finish and will see vision and watch it. Every time they see vision for you, they are seeing negative things. They will transfer the negative to you because you came. Anybody that has a virus in his computer, if you connect your computer with that person's computer, you contact what? Virus. The virus doesn't even ask for permission. As soon as you just plug in, flash drive, flash drive is that enter. The good softwares won't transfer. The bad software transfers. That's why you must build yourself to be able to have revelation on your own. I was saying, lay hands suddenly on no man and be no partakers of other men's word. Even the ones who is laying hands on you too is going to be taking something that they shouldn't be taking. Everybody learn to run your Christian life in a way that you don't go to pick what you shouldn't pick. Knowledge is in you already. Process it. Run your app. Run your app. It's there. When the knowledge is deposited, Father, how do I use what I just got today? Prosperity will be made manifest. Blessings will be made manifest if you begin to utilize even half of the knowledge you carry. If you process it, some of you will not be in this level. And I pray that doors begin to open for you. Amen. The blessings begin to come in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is going to bring you to that place and to that position. That you will not be a waste of knowledge. Amen. I will explain a lot of things to you. Maybe on Wednesday I'm going to talk about a few more things. 
Because I want you to know it's resident inside of you. When a revelation is given to you in the spirit, the pastor might not even know. So if you think that before God will speak to you, anything God will speak to you, God will have to tell the pastor first. That's a lie. God can tell you 1,000 things that he has not told the pastor. Even as you're sitting here now as I'm talking to you, the reason I'm preaching this message is because content in this message is your specific revelation. Content in this message is what? It's your specific revelation. The pastor will not have any idea about it. When God is talking to Samuel, it's not Eli's business. Eli can be in the environment. Samuel's revelation is Samuel's revelation. Eli runs to, uh, Samuel runs to Eli. Eli is not going to say, okay, don't worry. Go and sleep. I will tell the Lord to tell me so I can explain to you. No. Eli says, it's not my business. When the Lord comes to you, tell me speak for thy servant here. It. I'm busy. Amen. I have my own device. I'm running my own app. Amen. So you don't expect that I'm going for this prophet to come and hear. No. If God must always pass through people to speak to you, then he shouldn't have even talked to Samuel. He would have told Eli to inform Samuel you are now a prophet. He wouldn't have gone to, Je to Jeremiah on his own. When Jeremiah didn't even understand the prophetic, he would have found another person to go and inform Jeremiah you are a prophet. How many times did he do that? Hardly you see God send anybody to go and tell another person that you are a prophet in the scripture. Did you see? How many times have you seen this in the prophet? You can hardly see it that God will send someone to come and tell you that you are a prophet. If he wants to use you in the prophetic, he will come to you. That your ability to hear him when he comes to you is the proof that you're ready for the prophetic. If he sends somebody to you, then he's not building your senses. So he comes to you. Until you are ready to listen and obey, then the prophetic will not be born. Until, if you do it, the prophetic will be born. If you don't do it, he will not send you, somebody, to prepare you for the prophetic. It's almost closing time for church. Stand up.